I wish that applause was for me. <laughs> anyway, good evening. I think it's pretty clear what tonight's show is all about. So, why don't we just meet the fellow himself? Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Paul McCartney. <laughs> Just this my mother. God save all here, bar and the cat. Oh. I, it'll show yeah. you that the extent of your power. You see. Open hospitality. Yes. The entire menu is vegetarian. Oh my God. 
And you didn't even try the, the I didn't mushroom come, quiche, no. did you? No, I don't trust your hospitality. I think you're perfect. <laughs> now, look, that was a track off your latest album. That's right. Well, now, by a strange, nay, excuse me, leaning over Just here. A wonderful coincidence here. Oh, my God. I am in a position to present this to you. Will you tear this apart with fevered fingers? Because it's very. What is this? And what it is, in fact, is. Oh. Platinum, your, your oh. album's gone oh. Oh. Mm. Hey. Thank hey, you, right. Terence. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh. Well, now you sprung that on me. Hey, great. Good. Well, it hasn't been out very long, has it? <laughs> what? It's number two in the charts, of course, yeah. the album charts, yeah. and platinum already. That's it, isn't it? Well, double, double platinum, it's by the nice way. It's nice to know the old magic is still there, isn't it? Oh, I'll take that home with me. Don't yeah. mind you. No, no. Thank you. I was hoping to be able to hang it over my door, but still, if you want to take it. No, what, no. What's the favourite one of, of your successful hits? What's, what's your favourite track? My favourite tune? Um, I don't know, it's always the new one. Yeah. How's that for an answer? Yeah, we're going to see that in a minute anyway. Yeah, and it's, enjoy al it's it. always whatever you've sort of just been working on, you know, it's the kind of fresh Yeah. Do you get a, a lot of chance to listen to, to new pop, or are you still in touch with what's happening now, do you think? Yes, I'm sweating like a pig here. <laughs> but, uh, yes, uh, my, normally my kids kind of keep me a bit in touch with the new stuff and the radio and things like so that. So who do you listen to now? Oh, I don't know, you know, all sorts of people like... Uh... Yeah, you too. Yeah. Come on, George Harrison. Oh, he's a good one. Yeah, I was going to ask right, you George. that. Because that's, that's number two in the singles, Charles. That is, yes. I'm two in the albums. He's two in the singles. Quite amazing. It's wonderful. Well, we I, should I, get together. It's all the over 40s making an assault on the charts. This is it? what it is, all the uh, older people in the audience, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's seven in the top 20 at the moment by over 40s. I yeah. Mean, do you think that's good for the state of pop? I mean, is it not a, a sort of sad commentary? I think what it is, at this time of the year, all the sort of compilation albums come up, and you've got to be over 45 to have done that many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the 25th anniversary of, of Love Me Do. Yeah. When, do you, when do you listen to... <laughs> I remember playing that as a boy broadcaster in Ireland. That's right, yeah. yeah. I remember you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you. You came across loud and clear across the Irish Sea. Do you think, when you listen to these things now, do you... Are you proud of them, or do you... Well, obviously you're proud of them, but do you feel that they've stood the test of time? Yeah, I think as songs and as uh, recordings and performances, I think they've stood the test of time. I think the, the problem is the technical thing. Yeah. You know, uh, sounds are now very different, and the, all the machinery is kind of much better now. So uh, it's sometimes the, the drum sounds, and they sound a bit... Boop, boop. Yeah. You know, uh, I'll do that again. Do it, please. Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that a bit. Yeah, drums, well, yeah. well, your record was rather like that, wasn't it? It was. It was a lot like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say there was a lot of poo poo on. on. <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles released on CD uh, this year, and I think George was saying that he, he was unhappy for that reason that you were saying that. that uh, that's not the way he remembered the record. Some of the brass was a bit too forward and all that. Yeah. And you were happy with those? Well, I mean, I was happy as you can get, you know, because it's the new medium, CD, and uh, that's what people want to buy in. Yeah. So uh, you can't sort of say to them, you can't have it in CD. You know? Are you happy with new techniques in recording? You know that it's, it's all got a bit tricksy now, hasn't it? Yeah. There's a lot of complication. Yeah. Uh, myself, I think it's going to change. You know, I think you'll get the kind of techno business with all the machines and the computers and stuff and that's developing uh, a lot of people use it but I think you're starting to find a lot of people wanting to have a real drummer now and real voices and, and sort of real bands playing I think it's probably come back the other way you know like fashions go in circles that's obviously why you like groups like you too because they can they can uh, play that's what I like I, I like all the bands who can actually play you know like Simple Minds U2 UB40 you know, I think they can actually get up there and sing but uh, I, I don't, know, I don't think I told you last time I was on. I hope not, anyway. They'll cut it if I did. So. Um, <laughs> I was working in the studio, and there's a group there who's very into this techno stuff, and the bass player was up in the, in the hospitality room, and uh, he got the call, you know, come down and do your bass part. So he said, great, you know, here's your big chance. Go on, go, go have fun, you know. Good. So he goes down, he's back up in about four minutes. We said, well, that was quick. You must have got it in one take. He said, they only wanted one note. Donk. And then they put it in the computer. Yeah. He's been studying all those years to go, dunk. <laughs> well, I think it is returning, you know, to a bit more performance and stuff. As you say, you 2 and stuff, they're a little bit less computerised. I think the last time you were here, we talked uh, about uh, 
your youth and the hard time you had and all. Kind of, many of us were in tears throughout. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to drag you through that again, but I, ju I just thought, when you went to school, when you were in school, did, you didn't go up to your careers officer ever and say, when he said, well, what do you want to be, McCartney? I want to be a singer-songwriter. No, I didn't. I wanted to be a teacher. At the time, it was the only thing I had uh, the qualifications to be. You know, so, so that was what I was looking forward to. You were a bit being, of a disappointment you know. to the school, I imagine, because they thought well, that you would do better academically, didn't they? Well, you know, they do that on everyone's reports. Could do better, see me. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, I went out to Hamburg and we were earning the princely sum of 15 pounds, which, as you remember, Terry, was a lot <laughs> in those days. And I wrote, I was so sort of chuffed to be earning 15 pounds, I wrote back to my headmaster of this kind of grammar school, quite good grammar school in Liverpool, very good grammar school. And uh, I wrote about, dear sir, you know, you, I'm sure you'll understand. I'm in Hamburg playing with a group, but we're on £15 a week, so stuff you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you wish, in a way, that, that you'd pursued any kind of academic career or become better qualified academically? Not really. I mean, I was... Uh, what's strange happened to me, in, in school, the only thing I was really good at was, like, English. I had a really good English literature teacher. And um, he kind of got me onto that sort of vaguely poetic... Thing. You know, I mean, you're, you're like that. You like words. Yeah. You like to sort of play with that. I'm, I'm interested in that. And funnily enough, what happened with me is with working with John, we sort of, in a way, become known as the sort of uh, poets of our generation, you know. So, so I've sort of done it a little bit. I've, I got into literature without meaning to. Yeah. You know what I mean? You and John both love words, the mm. creativity of it. The lyrics, mm. as much as, the, as, as important as the music to you. Yeah, I think so, you know. Yeah, you say a lot if you get it right. Do you come from a musical family? Your father used to play, didn't he? No, he used to play piano and trumpet till his teeth gave out. <laughs> <laughs> Not his lip, no, his teeth. It was it? his teeth who, that was the big problem, yeah. <laughs> Could, can't play a trumpet. He had a hard time, though, hadn't he, really, because your mum died when you were very young. Is, is that... It must be a great regret to you that she didn't see you succeed. Yeah, that is, that is one of the sort of big regrets, really. And, uh, well, you know, as when you have kids, too, that she didn't know how the kids turned out and stuff. Um, but my dad sort of kind of made up for it, you know, he, he sort of overdid it. You know, he'd be, he'd be <laughs> super proud kind of thing, you know, be in a restaurant and he'd just be sort of, he'd nudge me, he'd say, don't look, he said, they've spotted you. <laughs> that, ta that table's got you, they've got you. <laughs> smile, smile over here, smile. Go on, son. <laughs> so he, he made up for it. With his wide experience of the piano and the, and the, the trumpet before his teeth gave out, I mean, did he give... <laughs> <laughs> was he a great source of advice to you? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there's a story I tell, you know, people might have heard it a bit, but uh, we used to write in the back room of our house in Fortland Road in, uh, in Allerton, Liverpool, and uh, Dad would be in the living room watching the telly, you know, and we'd be in the back room writing, She Loves You and stuff. And John and I came out, we'd done it in the evening, we kind of, and we used to try it out, and my dad said, how, how do you like this? She loves you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And played it all. She said, very nice, son. He said, very nice. He said, but... There's enough of these Americanisms around. Couldn't you sing, she loves you, yes, yes, yes? <laughs> no, Dad, you haven't quite got the idea, you know. <laughs> but when, but you, when you finished, when the Beatles finished, it, it must have been a very hard act to follow. Did, yeah. you, did you quite know where you were before you started Wings? Well, um, no, it was like, uh, if there was any group that you could pick to not want to follow, on a bill. It would be something like the Beatles, probably, yeah. Uh, so it was really just a choice at the time as to whether I was going to try and attempt to sort of follow it or just give up and not be in music anymore. And the urge to sort of do music won, really. So it was pretty difficult. We just went back to basics and took a little band on the road, which was Wings. And we just turned up at universities and said, do you want the Paul McCartney on tomorrow? Yeah, but it was a, a very plucky thing to do because you were bound to be compared. And you yeah. were bound to be knocked, given the nature of some areas of, of the music press. Mm. You were bound to be knocked for just being Paul McCartney, I suppose. But there wasn't really any alternative. As I say, the only other alternative was to give up. And I didn't fancy that. Wings were very successful, of course. I mean, the people perhaps don't remember that, but enormously successful. And you were together longer than you were together as the Beatles. I know, that was amazing when we found that out. Because I thought the Beatles were together for at least 20 years. And you look at it, it's just 10 years. Mm. And we, we did longer than that with Wings. But, um, no, because we were in the shadow of the Beatles all, with, all the time, we always assumed we weren't doing well. 
At the end of the 10 years, we sort of broke up. We thought, well, that wasn't too good, was it? But we, you'd sort of look up in all the charts and stuff. And we, we did great, you know. Even memory. albums we thought were lousy were sort of number eight in America and stuff. Yeah. And Moll of Kintyre, of course, which was the, they say, in some, in some charts, the, the best-selling single of all time. Did you, did you recognise it as such when you were making it? No, I didn't, actually, you know. Uh, I, I thought I really just wanted to do a Scottish song because I, I thought there weren't any modern Scottish songs. They're just, they were all old for traditional ones. I wanted to try and write a, a modern one. So I had a go at that and had a lot of fun making it with the pipers and everything up in a barn in Scotland. We had a, quite an evening. Um, and they were saying to me, that's a hit, that's a number one. <laughs> hey, no, no problem there, Jimmy. That's a number one. <laughs> I said, well, I don't know, you know. I never was that convinced because it was the height of punk at the time. You're very keen on, on Scotland. Was it John that introduced you to Scotland? Was actually, yeah. He, um, not a lot of people know, Terry. <laughs> but, uh, John was, he, he sort of came off his image, was like sort of working class hero. He was actually the least working class of the Beatles. He was, he, he was brought up in a very sort of nice middle class uh, environment. And uh, he had relatives in Scotland, and as a kid, he went to a croft in Scotland, which is unheard of for us, you know. You, Butlins was the height, you know, for us, Gegness. Uh, so he did, he'd talk lovingly about the heather and the hills, oh, we, you know. <laughs> and I sort of got a feeling about it, and uh, eventually I'd, I ended up buying a farm up there, and I really love it now, you know. Knack okay, well, we do have uh, the new video. I think this is the first time anybody's seen Paul McCartney's new one, Once Upon a Long Ago. Up scales and broken cords, up your dog tails in the house of lords. Tell me, darling, what can it mean? Making up moons in a minor key, what are those tunes got to do with me? Tell me, darling, where have you been? Once upon
as the more perceptive of you will have seen after that terrific video. Congratulations. Thanks, terrific Tom. record. Tola. Joined by Linda McCartney. Welcome, Linda. Thank you, Ted. You, you did have a small part in that, didn't you? Oh, if you don't blink, you'll see me. Yeah. And it looked dangerous because that was recorded, you tell me, before the day after the great blow, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. We were in Devon and we were hoping for a bit of good weather, you know, like filming. You, you've got to have some good weather. And I was stuck on the top of that rock, you know, and they just had this hurricane. <laughs> Dead dodgy. <laughs> Yeah, but you see, that's your, possibly your pig-headedness, isn't it? I mean, you've got... Thanks you, a lot, Terry. Well, no, well, come on. <laughs> you could have postponed it. You could have postponed it by a day. Now, come on. Well, you couldn't. No, you've got your film crew there, and they've all come down to Devon for two days, you know, and you, just everyone's booked. Like Nigel Kennedy, who's in on yeah. Fiddle, he, he couldn't have done any other two days, so... You had to risk life and limb. Well, you see, it's, it's showbiz, Terry. It is, isn't it? That, this is very exciting. You're, you're slipping into a Welsh I'm, accent there. I'm going into the sort of <laughs> little well, Irish touch there. Uh, well, well, no, this is, if you're, honestly, your father would be very proud of you. Because <laughs> Jim is an Ireland. Irishman, isn't he? Jim, well, our family's supposed to go back to Ireland, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they didn't go back years ago, they're not going back now. <laughs> Linda. Yeah. Your family. Often confused with, with the people who make the films, aren't they? Eastman Kodak is supposed to come from, which is why people say, no wonder she's a successful photographer. She's a member of the Kodak family. So, no relation. A foul and... No, it's funny, I never even thought to pick up photography because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at that video, there's it's black and white, a lot of lovely scenery. It's just the kind of stuff you take, isn't it? Dramatic. It is, it's, it was very like Scotland, I must say. It's a place where that stag, you know, the stag that went up on the roof, that yeah. they say didn't feel fear, right? He was happy up there. That's where that was. I would have liked to photograph that. Did you study to be a photographer? Or did you just show no. an early flair? No, I didn't study. I just was encouraged by somebody to take up photography. If you hadn't, you, you wouldn't have met Paul, is that right? Probably hmm. not. You never know. <laughs> Could have been a good move. Yeah. How did you? How did, yeah, quite. Can't always be lucky. Yeah. No, no, no. So, no comment. No comment. Yeah, I did. So you. Did you meet him by, while taking photographs of him or, or pretending to? Well, I was in England taking photographs for a book and yeah. I thought I'd like to photograph the Beatles and Stevie Winwood, who's yeah. a great favourite yeah. of mine. And we happened to meet down in a club. It's one of them. He flung I pulled her down a club. He flung himself. <laughs> hey, girl. You know, yeah. fancy yeah. shit near. What do you think? <laughs> you were, I, you'll bet you weren't impressed at first, were you? Um, Go on, go on, yeah, go on. Go I was on. quite impressed. Well, we, were, we were seeing a great band at the time, so we were all pretty, yeah, great, great, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we should have a look at some of your photos because, again, you kind of... Being married to Paul McCartney, it's, it's very easy to live in the shadow, isn't it? Did you, did you feel a necessity to, to break out? No, I'm not really worried about that living in the shadow. You know, I, I love life and I'll just have a good time, shadow or no shadow. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you encourage Linda to, to go out and do this stuff as well? Yeah. No, it is true, you know, because she's my wife. Some people mm. do look at her and sort of think, oh, it's the only reason people look at her photos is because it's exactly. the wife of the fella. But um, she's a really good photographer. One of the best, I reckon. <laughs> Thank you. We'll have a look at some of them here. This is, this is Jimi Hendrix that you referred to. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful Jimi Hendrix. Great. And uh, where, where did you take that? I took that in Central Park where they had some outdoor gigs and it was the first time he ever played America. And he's my hero, Jimi. Greatest guitar player ever. Yeah. Now, what I was, we were talking about this earlier and Paul was saying that you actually, it's your horse mm. and you put it in there and let the daisies grow around it. Absolutely. <laughs> Took yeah. seven years to do that photo. <laughs> you kept feeding the horse, and so the daisies grew more smartly. Yeah, yeah. that's lovely. That is, your, that is one of your, your own animals. Yeah, he's an American Indian pony, what they call an Appaloosa. Yeah. And he's lovely, and he's, he's such a friend that I could just... I love wildflowers. So when I saw that field, I rode him over there, and I said, all right, stay, boy. Not sit, boy, stay, boy. And he actually stayed there, and I had a 10-8 big plate camera, and I've got to ask you, I had Norman Parkinson on here, the great photographer, and he was selling sausages, really, was what he was doing. <laughs> but he I'm was... a vegetarian, don't talk to me about sausages. Sorry, 
Right. <laughs> we do have this mushroom quiche upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'd like to try right. and push that off on you, if possible. Have you got Have you got a doggy bag? Listen, I'm trying to talk about Norman Parkinson. Oh, here, that's right. Yeah. It's a stick from Michael Parkinson. Irish DJ. Sorry, over to you. Anyway, Norman Parkinson. He said to me. Ladies and gentlemen. He said to me. Norman Parkinson said to me. And it was a revelation. He said, when you're taking a picture, in the old days it used to be, get the sun behind you, you see, and take the picture with the box brownie. And he said, no, he said, always take your pictures into the sun. And that came as an enormous revelation. Have you any little tips for photographers now? Um, I think follow your instinct. One thing, I never crop photographs. When you look through, make sure it's the picture you want. And just take pictures if there's enough light or not. Let's have a look at another one then, because we're going to... Swans. Yes. I know a swan when I see one. Where was this taken? This was down a place called near Fairlight, where they were going to drill for oil. Oh, you're keen on that. Come on, give well, us a bit about Fairlight, because well, you're trying to protect that, aren't you? Well, I'm, all of England, in fact, the world needs people to stop ruining it and leave it for our own aesthetics, as they say. Can and you live on aesthetics, though? Well, you can live on aesthetics a lot more than concrete and rubbish, yeah, I think. Yeah. You know, I think people are much happier with nature than they are with all the trees being cut down and the big trucks moving in and somebody's making money and it's not the people, that's for sure. Are you committed to that in the same way, Paul? Yeah, at that particular place where the photo is, there were going to be 36 of these nodding donkeys drilling for oil, you know. I don't think that really improves the view, you know. No, no. <laughs> is he... Nodding donkeys? Are you a keen photographer? Do you do all that stuff? No, not really. I'll leave that to Linda. She's much He's better good, than I am. Is he? It's natural. You stand up for him all the time. Can we, yeah, we, not get... we like each other, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many years are you married now? I don't care. And you still like each other? I don't care, yeah. Do you like each other better now? I don't know about not better. The same. What, do you, what do you reckon? Should we tell him? Nah. nah no way. Okay. We're on telly. Why are we going to tell <laughs> him? No, don't Terry give anything else. away. Nah. Yeah. No. You're both very busy people. I mean, you with the music, the photography, the various things that you interest yourself in. Um, do you, did you? As your family were growing up, did you get much time to, to give to your family? How oh, important absolutely. a priority is that to you both? It's, uh, it's a big priority. That's, that's one of the reasons I think we don't sort of tour the world all the time, you know. And, uh, I mean, obviously I could be off and doing the world tours and stuff. But uh, with kids, you've got to give them some time, you know. That's one of the problems of showbiz is uh, not just showbiz, politics and stuff. You know, there's always these politicians, they're always speaking in the House and stuff, and it's the House of Parliament, not their own house. And uh, get a lot of problems at home, you know, because of that kind of stuff. So we do try and be there, if possible. Do you have any rules for bringing them up to you? Are you the kind of parents that would put them in a corner and lecture them or tell them what you want? Not me. <laughs> Did he? Was he a bit more old no, really? No. Uh, we, I mean, you know, you get the moments where you're sort of telling your kids something, going, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Dad, yeah, yeah. Mum. Oh. You know what kids are like. You've got a few yourself. Yeah. We love them. We love being there. I mean, my kids are my best friends, really. Yeah. You know, they're very, no, but they're great. I know. The question they always ask, they always ask me. And it, <laughs> I'm <you>, saying. <laughs> <laughs> the question they always ask me, and, and it must be much, much worse in your case, is, uh, with a name like McCartney, it must have been very tough for him. For the kids, yeah, well, I, you, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. No. You, you, you know, you're stuck with it. You are in showbiz and you're in the sort of public eye. Um, but, you know, I think the kids learn to stick up for themselves, you know, quite early on. And uh, they get, take a little bit of stick at school at first, but then it eases off and the one fella who's always going, yeah, McCartney, more looking tired, yeah. <laughs> he, he eventually... <laughs> You know him. Yeah. You've met him. Yeah. Yes. That's my son, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it, it is a tribute to you both as parents that, that your family are up there looking in. They're up there. Yeah. All right, they, didn't just, they just didn't stay at home to watch you on the television. They've come yeah. along to see you. Yeah, yeah. Now, is there anything specific you'd like to achieve, I'll ask you both, in the next 20 years? You've achieved so much. Over to you. Well, for me, it's more... You know, the old thing, peace and earth and stop eating animals and all. You know, things are a bit embarrassing because I seem a bit cranky, but it's really what I'm interested in. Yeah. You know? Yes, I can, vegetarians can often be portrayed as cranks, but I don't think that's I just love different animals different. and I don't believe in eating them, that's all. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, my ambitions are sort of along the same kind of lines, really, you know, just 
I mean, even with the Beatles, you know, you were always looking for sort of peace on earth. And after a while, you know, it gets yeah. boring. People say, yeah, peace, you know, I'd rather have war. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> you know, it's more exciting, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, so that's what we kind of keep chundering on about. And you get people like Geldof, you know, and they do great things. You, children in need, you know, that's, that's what's, to, what's to do in life, I think. There's still a lot of that. And yeah. have a laugh and have a bit of a song along with it, you know. Well, we thought perhaps uh, you would give us a bit of a song. Yeah. Cute. Good idea. Paul and Linda McCartney, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Let's be hearing from them. My thanks to them both. I'll see you after the weekend, Monday at 7 as ever. Before that, Paul and Linda McCartney. And listen to what the man said.
up scales and broken cords Up your dark tails in the house of lords Tell me, darling, what can it mean? Making up moons in a minor key What are those tunes gotta do with me? Tell me, darling, where have you been? In the small English town of Liverpool with some friends, he formed a band that were known as the, uh, the, the Beatles, and apparently they were very famous. Um, and it doesn't surprise me because the boys in the band say he's a great little entertainer. So will you please welcome, playing live with Steve Naive and the Playboys, Mr Paul McCartney.
I wouldn't mind you signing for some friends of mine, if that's all right. <laughs> uh, don't you? I have to do them now, John. I mean... this, is, this is for a friend of mine uh, called Jonathan, if you just <laughs> signed it. <laughs> now, um, when was the last time you did live TV? Live music You're serious live TV? about this, Yeah, it's to, it's to a friend of mine called this Jonathan. This is the, the week item. <laughs> this is the week item. <laughs> 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 I'll do this for you, Jonathan. Uh, Paul McCartney, yeah. Jonathan. So Paul what, McCartney was here. Yeah. So why do the oldie like that? Is that... Uh... Uh, I've recorded some of them on my 12-inch uh, of my new single, Once Upon a Long Ago. Uh -huh. A couple of rockers on it. A couple so. of rockers on the back. Did you do this one for? There's another friend of mine. Just put Is the. Are you kidding? This, just put the initials to JR on. To JR. <laughs> now, what? what how, uh, recently, uh, Michael Jackson bought all the um, the Northern Song catalogue, didn't he? Did he? A lot he? of your stuff on. Yes, he did. Uh, yeah. How did you feel about that? I know you own quite a few songs yourself. Yes, well, it was a terrific move on his part. Because you worked with him, didn't you? You kind of duetted yes, him. Yes, I did. Yes. Did you know he planned to buy them? Well, he sort of said to me, I'm going to buy your songs, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought he was joking. I said, get out of here. And he phoned me and said he's bought them. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're writing with Elvis Costello at the moment, aren't you? Well, not at this very moment. No, not at this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> but you did your show. How did that get together? How did you work with Elvis? Uh, somebody said, it uh, might be a good idea if you wrote with Elvis Costello. Uh -huh. I said, yeah, well, we're going to try. As they do. <laughs> no, he's, he's very good, you know, so we... Could you put this one to well, John John? This was one of the... Wait, wait. To John John. Yeah. Okay. Baby. You... This is definitely the weak item on the show. You you I reckon he gets one weak item every <laughs> week, you know. <laughs> Only one. You're far too kind, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, what's up? You're going to tour soon, aren't you? You can do some live dates? Well, I mean, that's the, uh, maybe next year sometime, you know. Mm -hmm. And what, who are you going to talk to? Have you got a band organiser? Are you going to try and take these blade No, boys? I haven't asked the lads yet, but uh, they're shaping up pretty well. They're working out. Well, yeah. we, we can't uh, possibly let you go without doing another number for us. Uh, okay. Before then, could you just sign this one here? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's it. No, 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 no way, no oh, way. I can, I can fake it Refused anyway. Refused no. What are you going to do for this, Paul? I thought I'd... Uh, just sign the rest of those albums. <laughs> no, a uh, little song called "I Saw Her Standing There," because she was just seven. <laughs>
My dad's still rocking like a teenager. Thanks for watching. See you next week. And Paul, give us one more. Paul McCartney. <laughs>
Really good to see him back on the box, yeah. and I love Nigel Kennedy's hair. Yeah. Here's the top ten.